Hello, my name is Patrick. Welcome to my show. Whew, I'm just doing some gardening. I'm kind of tired. Uh, no black magic on me yet. <laughs> it usually comes later in the day. Lately, it's usually it's 4:44 in the morning, and uh, it's been nine o'clock lately. Uh, here's my holy water with my Saint Benedict coin. And I got labels here, and I have a new, I made a new uh, mug. I think it's sort of working, like, uh, I can measure the chakras, you know, to see how much they're open. And, you know, now they kind of go, you know, in and out, depending on, mostly they're, they're doing really good lately. And uh, everything's open, the universe is coming through. Uh, a couple days ago, I had a, a dream in the morning about uh, a huge explosion happened in the horizon. I was standing there, and then I ran towards the explosion. Now, it could have been like a nuclear bomb, but it didn't have the cloud shape to it, maybe a tactical-type weapon, and it, it just went straight up, the explosion, instead of being like a mushroom. I'm not sure what the tactical nuclear explosions look like, but uh, they've been used recently. I mean, it, uh, countries have used them, I believe. Anyway, uh, as I ran towards the explosion, this enormous explosion, I could see a rocket like an ICBM missile or a Saturn V rocket fully loaded with fuel. Perhaps there was a bomb on the ICBM, but I could see it in the middle of the fire of the explosion, and there's a fire going. And in the dream, the thought going, oh, it's going to set off that rocket and whatever's on it. And I, and there's like someone else around running towards it. And we just both turned around and ran the other way as fast because we were too close. When that goes, it's going to be bigger than the first one. That's what it implies. And uh, that's on the horizon. So that could be something coming up for us. And I did douse. It's probably... Uh, it could be like a false flag event coming up. And we'll probably get more of these because the, uh, the bad guys are probably losing. I still had, you know, a couple months leading up to July 4th, I had it 50-50 whether they were going to go public with information on what's going on. And as I said before, this is all about not timing, but a process to get to a certain point of defeating the enemy. And when they get to a certain point, which I get is like 85%, and I, I think they're there. I think most of the battle is over. Uh, then they'll come out with some really outrageous things to let the public know. And as I mentioned before, when they come out, it's going to be only 20% of the truth. Of, it's, it's not like they're lying. They can't overwhelm us with depth of the battle and I always had since September we've been in the Civil War leading up to that it was more like uh, like we we're just below simmering Civil War but we're, we're in a Civil War now and everything is a lie that's the problem everything is a lie and it's, it's just you can't get the truth on anything you know even in the Middle East China we're not getting anything uh, there, there's secret agreements between countries because we'll move into something down the road and it could get really rough and uh, I always had I so I had a dream with Putin kind of was mad at me you remember that dream and he gave me cash to tell me to shut up and I didn't want to take the cash but I guess maybe I shouldn't reveal some things a lot of you already know what I was talking about. So I probably won't talk about that anymore so much. It's not important for us. You know, all these countries have their own existential uh, issues. And um, the United States is being attacked from within. And a part of this, it's probably mostly uh, Alex Jones and Steve Pachenik, who's the former 
a CIA guy who smuggled uh, cocaine into the United States with Barry and the boys. Remember that? They made Tom Cruise made a movie. Uh, Steve Pachenik was part of that. He was a, he's a psychiatrist. He's very well educated from Harvard. Uh, he's a Jewish, uh, I believe, somewhere in South America. And uh, he's sort of kind of cleaning up his, he's, he's older now. I think he's like late 70s, maybe 80. So he might be cleaning the deck. Some of you have pointed that out in the comments. And that's probably true. So that's why he's more truthful than Alex Jones, who's still in the middle of his game. He's, but Pachenik forced Alex Jones to acknowledge that Mossad is a problem for the United States. It's, it's attacking anywhere it wants. And this is from Alex Jones and Steve Pachenik said uh, Mossad did 9-11 and it's doing a lot of stuff now. Even possibly in my dream, that, that nuclear bomb going off. So we, we got a, a lot of problems and presently the, the, the relationship between Israel and uh, the United States government is strained right now over some big issue. And the big issue could have been what pushed uh, Netanyahu out of power finally. I mean, he, he seems to stay around forever. He's like uh, uh, Merkel, who's like, you can't get rid of her. She always says, oh, I have a successor. And then she, she goes about sabotaging the successor. <laughs> so you got Merkel forever. I wouldn't be surprised she dies in office. And I had that dream a couple years ago. I thought it was something else. Merkel was in a coffin, and I was carrying the coffin. And it slipped out of my hand, hit the coffin, and went down this uh, this well or something. And she banged her head and stuff. She was dead. And it's like the world gets rid of her. She's down this shaft. And it goes down and down and down. The coffin and Merkel are all down. Maybe she's out of history. When she goes, we're going to say goodbye to her. All, all the problems of Germany will probably dissolve in some way of... Uh, the, the things their deep state has been doing. Anyway, maybe that's what it's about. She'll finally go when she dies. <laughs> She's been a tough one. Then Yahoo, I think he did something so egregious that even the United States could not look the other way. And he probably was forced out of office. So I, I think for the United States, our biggest problem is uh, Mossad and her attack on uh, the United States, the people, the institutions in the United States. And I don't even think the people of Israel can get rid of Mossad. That's how ingrained it is. And uh, a lot of the problems in Israel would disappear if that organization did not exist. And uh, anyway, we move on. And uh, don't forget to spray your house with uh, holy water, saying those. Uh, if you don't know and things are going really bad in your life, say, you all know, <laughs> the All Father and uh, Psalms 51. Now, the, the I get the strongest text in the Bible, including the New Testament. And the New Testament is a higher vibration than the Old Testament, by the way, because they had more time to get rid of a lot of the books. It's older. But I would say the number one life force in the Bible is the All Father. And it's very powerful. And there's a reason in the 1880s, even in the 1970s, you would go to villages and, and you see everybody doing their rosary. And basically, what is a rosary? It's, it's, it's a combination of things, but essentially it's the All Father. You say it 10 times so they don't lose track. And you do the whole circle of the rosary and what does that do? It shifts you into that frequency, into the higher frequency. And you know, when think you're poor and nothing's going right, and things like that, that's something you could do to help protect you a lot. You know, you want to shift. And I, I told you the Buddhist prayers, you could say, uh, the highest book in the Old Testament I got, and I don't understand it, I got to go read the chapter, but it's, it's numbers. Numbers is the highest beside the Psalms. Now, Psalms has certain chapters that are very special, like 10 of them. And after the Our Father comes Psalms 
107 and it it's very powerful and I, I get rid of stuff all the time with that one when I feel the need and then 51 and then uh, 16 and 19 are all good say them all if you're really getting clobbered and you can say the all father between all the songs it's really powerful you know that the point being the longer you're in that energy the more you're going to be stronger and it'll stick it'll stay with you when you stop so the rosary takes let's say 20 minutes and you know that's why a lot of the devout in Catholicism say the rosary that's what it's about and it was given to boy about 900 years ago was given to a, some saint in a vision to, to do that and that's where the rosary came from it came from a, a vision and it came from a uh, and he was told to do this as was some of those medals I talked about most of the medals you know there are hundreds of them you know they're just average people they're not we pointed out the powerful ones and that's what we're doing we're trying to get things that are powerful that can shift you and you can hold it and uh, I actually doused you know what is what is Patrick soul what is a philosophy I am doing I think you guys should know because I don't know <laughs> you know no no Christian church will take me the Buddhist churches will take me or temples and uh, uh, I don't think the Jews will take me and the Muslims won't take me <laughs> so I don't have anywhere to go I, I just all by myself with Max us we have the uh, animal nature church but so I asked the uh, my, my my dowsing what is my soul and I did it for other people too it's really really interesting because it's it's the truth teller about your philosophy in life you ever wonder about that what is my philosophy in life am I uh, uh, sometimes you get a hold of a couple books and you, you think you have that but you're not there's an underlying idea uh, concept and for me, it's it's between, uh, and it could be several. It's several. It could be several. But for me, it's mostly I am a Taoist, which is Taoism, and about forty percent Christianity. I have to go back. I already forget. You know, some Taoism. You know, some a little bit of shamanism from Europe. You know, up there. But mostly, most that that was surprising to me. And Taoism is just going with the flow of energy in your life. It's simple. There is no head of Taoism. Taoism is a personal thing. And I and it, you know, in my life, I go well. I never really studied. I read it. I read Taoism, some books on it. And if there's a you know, the I Ching is an ancient Chinese book, and the one that Wilhelm did. Boy, I, I went through like four or five of those books. I don't have one now. People keep taking them from me. But the first half is more of a Confucius type technique for the Qing, interpreting. It. And uh, the second one is, is Taoism, interpretation of the Qing. And the Qing is just a divination technique that's ancient, ancient, ancient China. And you can learn so much about philosophy, and it's about energy. It really is about energy. Like, uh, there's a thunderstorm coming. You know, it talks like that, you know, like, get out of the way, get shelter, <laughs> or you're a fox, get your tail wet, you know, when you think you got through, and oh, your tail get in at the last minute. Okay. Excuse me. And that's Taoism. And maybe I picked up some of the uh, philosophy there. Then the Christianity part, you know, it's like 35, 40% is my expression. So if I were to do people around me, we all would be a little bit different because your your soul expression, your personality is kind of in it. Even if you go, you're 100% 100 Buddhist, you're probably not. You're probably not. You're 100% Christian, you're probably not. You're... You're 100 percent go lucky this or something. You're not. You know you can dot, you can get in there and find out who you were and actually how the past lives have influenced you as well. I mean it's it's interesting, you know. And I, I guess that's the way I am in life is that the Taoist is sort of like it's pretty practical. You're 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 kind of looking at how you're flowing through life and you you know 
there's a there's a train coming, and the light at the end of the tunnel, tunnel is a train, so you, you know, get out of the way. It's a practical philosophy, and it's much more than that. But and people write about it, but it's it's about energy and, and, and working with it, and that's what we're doing here. You're trying to get the highest energy available for a human on this physical realm. That's what we're trying to do, and you're trying to see and slip in because there is there's I've been working on some other things for example about portals and we have portals in vortexes but the portals you know is how you get to these other planets you, you think the ETs are coming through ships they're, they're coming through portals they're right here in your backyard or something or or the next state over their portals and, uh, only humans can't go through the portals it's a one way and it's based on what I just expressed. What is your frequency? What is your life force? And the minimum life force is a five. You know, that's on my scale, one through ten. It's just roughly, it's a, it's, it's, you have to be a little bit above this, a certain, which is a four, which is average humans. And don't worry, all the government people, they're all ones. They're all like, they're not the average human. The average human is not in government. This, I wanted to do the uh, uh, Senior Executive Service. You remember we talked about it uh, four or five years ago and a couple of times. And it runs. It's how you, it's the deep state. And it must be destroyed, like we said before. And they bring these people in and out of government. It's how they control the top levels. You don't work your way up, and then you're, no, you're, you know, like somebody was mentioning, or you know, the Korean American who's like, Remember, he got like number two or three in the Justice Department. He didn't go up the ranks. He's a senior executive, uh, senior executive service individual. There's about ten thousand of them. Obama increased it by a lot, and they're mostly like African Americans. So there's a big chunks of African Americans, and there, I think there's a big chunk of Mossad agents, <laughs> and they just control the government. You know, so it's not really working out for the American people. It's top heavy. They don't do anything. It's not an efficient government, and um, so that's going to have to be rectified. The currency is being debased. It's going to have to be rectified, and a lot of the programs, like I'm on Social Security, a lot of you are on Social Security. I, I think they're going to target it. They've been targeting it. I, I, I'm going to turn a certain age. People in Social Security know what I'm talking about. So I get an insurance card, you know. And it's like they, they take money out of my Social Security to pay for this insurance. It's like, like it doesn't even make any sense. So everybody on Medicaid gets it for free. But I have to pay out of my Social Security. And when I douse, and it's out of the same building, you know, all those programs, because they go, oh, Social Security is running this big program. They know how to handle this big stuff. So it ends up handling both sides of the equation. But it's all Social Security money going in. And they co-mingled it with all these other programs, and uh, so I don't have dental, but I, I, I guess I could I could go get on Medicaid, which is for poor people, and I can get dental over there. But I would have to give up. I don't know. It's so confusing. It's it's like nuts. And I'm, I'm watching the Social Security get smaller and smaller. And I know that it's being targeted to for total destruction. And they want to give everybody the universal income. And I'll lose 30% there. It said the thousand said I'll lose 30% purchasing power, but I've I've already lost in the last two years probably 30% what they've done with these things. Finally, I wanted to move on to the big banks. Remember, we had a discussion on I think December, like a big chunk of them, the top 10, eight were totally critically bankrupt. The banks were totally they're underwater and. Uh, only one was in the positive the bank out of Minnesota. I don't know what it is. I can't remember. And and then out of the hundred, two, same thing. Everybody. Well, I did it a couple of weeks ago. The dowsing on it, and the banks are like super healthy, super healthy, great balance sheets, everything. And, you know, uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, Bank of America. They're all they're all like, oh, they got all this profit because the bulk of the stimulus package went to them and other industries, the defense industries, and a lot of a lot of big Amazon and things like that because 
they wanted to get rid of middle America, the smaller businesses. I, I mean, smaller business, they have 100 employees or something. That's considered small. Uh, they wanted to wipe them out, and they did. The middle class has just been taking one hit after another, and that's the purpose of COVID. And it's, So they want to bring it back, COVID, but no one's believing it. And they go, well, you need a booster. It'll just make you sicker. You know, I already told you that. It's going to kill 18, 19, 20% of the people. And then, when I douse, uh, do I have a, I don't have it here. Let's go douse it. So this is all spiritual. I'm, ask, I'm asking God. We're asking God. We're, we're, we're not asking the government. So I'm not saying, I'm not political or anything. I'm just asking God. I'm a, I'm a, Hmm. Anyway, it said something. What it said, I don't. I can't find it. I have this. I'll do a stool with it. I wanted to do it with the divination rod so you can see that I'm telling you the truth. But essentially, okay, what percent within 12 months will be severely sick or significantly affected by the, the uh, shot, the Pfizer shot and the Moderna, right? And I get 65%. Of those who took the shot, then then you add. Did that I include dead people who died? Okay, people who died significantly and severely affected. Too severely affected. All right, dead and severely affected. And you know, people probably can't work anymore after taking that shot. Say go. I'm at what percent in one year? About sixty percent. That's roughly, all right? Give me two years. 70%. 70, 70 what percent? Two years. 70, 73% in two years. In three years, what percent will die or significantly be affected? It's going to get up to like 80, 85%. I haven't even gotten to five years. All right? I haven't gotten to five years. And... Uh, I had a dream about three weeks ago. I've had it a couple of times where they're cornering me. They're chasing me down to give me the shot. And one time they just did it. They kind of like, they cornered me and, you know, they, they, I think it's just saying they're going to get more and more aggressive with this. Um, and uh, they're still attacking the Johnson & Johnson slash uh, Oxford. And that has a fraction. You, they have reactions there, but it's a, a fraction of what I just gave you, all right? So that's when you're saying, well, yeah, people have died from that one, but I'm still getting it. It's less, because it's actually a vaccine. It's different. It's not using a new technology of the, uh, what do you call it, the RNA, mRNA type, those proteins, uh, spike proteins, and uh it's just, they don't, there's just so much in it. There's so much that's going to affect you. And um, so do your best. If you already took it, we gave you a antidote on a budget, including holy water. Spray yourself for holy. Do the All Father and the 107 uh, for, for at least six minutes. And if you have time, 20 minutes. And sometimes you can just, like I told you about, you can get a couple of the, uh, those old, uh, I have a, a, a CD I got from some monks from the 1930s, and they uh, chanted, they can go, I have it repeat, I just close my eyes and I just go out, I just go out in the universe, and uh, that's shifting your energy as well. All these things are shifting your energy to higher frequency, and um, that can help you too with the virus. You, you, and you can you can pinpoint and say neutralize this uh, uh, vaccine neutralize it alchemically and that's an expression alchemically change you know you're changing something at its root which is evil in the vaccine and you're going to change it to light to the, the Holy Spirit you're going to change it to the, ask the Holy Spirit to come in when you're doing it say I don't know enough about the uh, the, the rosary thing. I just know that it's kind of funny. You go to different places and you look and you see repetition like uh, the, 
the Christian Orthodox, the Russian Orthodox Church has uh, uh, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, what do you call it? Have mercy on me, a sinner. So that's a long version. Or you can just say, Christ, have mercy on me. That's the short version. And you just repeat that. You know, the monks do it. But, but when you go over to the Catholics, like hundreds and hundreds of years old, they have the, uh, some of these chants are really old, like a thousand years, 1200 years old, and some are like 700 years old. They've been around and they work. And the ones that work, they, these are the ones they use. And one of them is, uh, I heard it in, in, when I was young, as a kid. Well, I don't know, I think it's just Catholic. But basically it's the same thing. You know what I get it? But they, they pretend they don't recognize the other guy's version of it. That's funny. But it, it's, you're just repeating, like Tibetan monks, you just repeat certain scriptures. And you can isolate those scriptures that are extremely high and you keep repeating it and you put it on a CD in the background and you listen to it and you lay and shut your eyes and you drift off, you're going to shift, alchemically change everything in your body, including the vaccine. And ask for the vaccine to be manipulated, to be changed. And this is especially if you're one of these people who, who got like uh, a reaction right away. And it's not. It's They don't want everybody to die in the first five days. They want to spread it out over three, four, five years. That's how you do it. And then you get rid of everybody, except for certain. As you know, I said it before, this is race-based. This is to get rid of whites and blacks. I'm really, that's what I doubt, all right? That's what I got. And if you're Latino, you're gonna be okay. I don't know why. So I asked who got the shot and who didn't get the shot, you know? So I said, how many Catholics got it? About 35%. How many whites got it? Well, that's about 37%. How many blacks got it? About 50%. You know, a lot. A lot. How many uh, Orthodox, Orthodox Jews who are genetically related to uh, Judea from the Bible? Uh, about 25% of those. And then the, the, the Khazarian Jews, about 0%. None of them got it. None of the Khazarians. And then you go to how many of the Chinese? The same thing. You know, the Chinese have their own vaccine. Oh, it's awful. Don't take it. And uh, the Russians have a vaccine called Sputnik. Uh, it's negative. It's not big negative, but it's a little bit negative. Don't take it. And also interesting, I'm giving you a crash course here of all my, some of my dowsing. And I'm just kind of going with the flow, a la, uh, uh, what do you call it? Dowis, Dowis. See, in Dowis, I'm, I'm allowed to talk to my dog, my dog. He, he can communicate back. And St. Francis of Assisi did that too. Uh, they tried to excommunicate him because usually you know when somebody's saint, a saint, is when they try to excommunicate him. <laughs> if they don't like him, the Vatican doesn't like him, he's, he's probably on the ball. And a lot of the, the, the monks... Now I got Burmese Buddhism is much better than Tibetan Buddhism. And in the Burmese version, uh, they live in the forest, and they call them forest monks. And uh, that's the one where I told you I went, and they came over to this house, and there was a meeting. of, And so these monks came over, just incredible Burmese monks. They're Buddhists. And uh, they have the wooden bowls. And the idea behind the wooden bowl is whatever is placed in the wooden bowl, the monk is to consume it. And you know, that's how uh, Buddha died. He died. You know, food was put in front of him, and he knew it was pork and it was uh, contaminated, but he ate it anyway. And he knew either he can alchemically change it or it was his time. And it was his time. There was no big, he could have changed it just like Jesus changes it, just like Ketzeketel. I mean, you go on and on. <laughs> and, uh, so the whole point of all this, even when I talk about Trump, is to is to uh, change our vibration, change our life force. And when I douse it, it's mostly life force. And by the way, it just came to me to tell you this. This is not a communist takeover of the United States that's running the United States right now. It's more 
a fascist. It's Nazis. And these are the same philosophy and energy as Nazi Germany has taken over America with the K, America. And this this is right after World War II, you know, the Operation Paperclip. More came over than they just. They all came here. Mengele came here. You know, and he. I think they called him. I'm not sure, but like Dr. Green. He was here the whole time. He was in, down in Brazil. They're, they're up here. And they were traveling around. And, and, uh, and there is a lot of philosophies or, or research saying how they did it. And I'm not sure about all that. But the philosophy, the, uh, the, the, the Franken School, which is Frankfurt, Germany, they came out of there in the 20s. They came to the United States. And so we got all the bad stuff. And then Putin sent over a lot of bad people. So did Yeltsin in 1990 when the Soviet Union collapsed. And they had all the mafia wars uh, break out. They sent them over to the United States. Brighton Beach, filled with Russians. And they're all like, it's a pretty bad group. We got all the bad groups. But now Russia's starting to work because they got rid of the people. And I'm saying to Putin, I'm, I get him on the phone and say, hey, take them back. They're, we're not doing that. What do you, you always, what? Oh, 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 good. He got into a river this morning. He's still wet, and he still wants more and more affection. Oh, 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 rub your tummy. Wag your tail. Come on. Wag, wag, wag. There he goes. <laughs> oh, you're a star. And when I say wag your tail, he understands. It's like that. I can say 20 words. Not until I get to the word wag your tail. He's like, he's happy. He's happy. And I hope when you get your energy up there, frequencies up, you will be able to go through the portals. Ah. There's some other things with the porters too. Uh, it favors people, individuals. Humans have a very difficult time if it's impossible for 100% human. You need to be a bit of a hybrid. In there. And a lot of people are hybrids sorts. I mean, they're, they're degrees of hybrid. And they're, they're probably looking to the future on what they need genetically for this human experiment to keep going. You know, the atmosphere could change, the, the gravity could change. There could be different gases. There could be, a lot of people have argued, a nuclear uh, material in the atmosphere. So this, this, this body we have doesn't do well with nuclear, but they could genetically alter the human body to uh, use the nuclear in the air that we're breathing because we contaminate it, perhaps, and we can breathe it in. Though, I don't think, now that dream I had a couple of days ago, uh, I think it's a false flag. And I think we're just going through this period. We're going to have more. Just stay vigilant. We're, we're going to change. Uh, we're, we're still fighting, for lack of a better word, the, uh, the bad things. Uh, you know, I never talked about, you know, my dreams are always peripheral. I'm probably hiding this stuff a lot of deep inside of me. <laughs> you don't need to know everything about yourself. You don't need to know all your experiences because some of it you can't really heal. Your, your body has an automatic defense mechanism to heal you by you leaving scar tissue on. It's, it's suppressed. It's way down there. Maybe you don't need to dig it up. You don't have to dig everything up change it. But you can, through all these prayers and through the uh, uh, chants, both Buddhists, I have, I had a couple, I should, I'm sorry I didn't bring it, I had a couple albums of Buddhism that was very, very high, and they're just monks in a monastery <laughs> chanting. And you know, genetically, they are, I, the reason I like them, say, there's a Gregorian chants and some Frenchmen he did it about, uh, I don't know, 30 or 40 years ago. You can buy it. His name's Pascal. And he went and got a, a lot of these chants. And he got artists. And I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. It kind of modernized it. And it's really cool. He did a real good job. But it's a little bit lower vibration. Just, you know, the chants are the essential. The content of the chant is essential. Where did it come? What's the purpose of that chant? Who channeled it? Basically, this is all channeling. Mozart and, and, and uh, Beethoven were channeling, but Beethoven was a clear channel. 
He was clean. He's really high. And Mozart probably drank and partied too much, you know. So the energy of that is not as good as Beethoven. That's just by a lot, by a lot. It's not close. Uh, uh, okay, Kyrie Eli So <laughs> I'm going back to the earlier part. I'm just I'm in flow here. Kyrie Eli Song, and what's the other one? Uh, Christy Eli Song, which is Latin. And it's a chant. It's, it's one of the most popular, totally powerful. Talk. You get it? And then if you get the monk to do it from 1930s, isolated, you know. And some of these monks chant for hours every day. You get up, they chant, you go to breakfast, chant a little before, you get some breakfast, chant in the middle of the day, you know. <clears throat> and I'm talking, I have to look it up how many hours, but anywhere between five and nine hours, depending. And they're like, they're totally space cadets. Their molecular structure of their hu human body changes, their mind changes. This is true of people who meditate a lot, the monks up in the Himalayas, you know, the mind will change because of all their meditation. And, uh, and it's like different when they scan. But I was getting to uh, Kyrie Eliason, ancient Greek or Greek for uh, God have mercy, Christ have mercy, Christian. And then they go on. And the modern one was, as I said, this guy does with this woman. She has a really nice voice, and she's some artist. And, uh, he does a whole album like that. It's really, it's really a special album, I think. But it's not quite as high as some of these obscure ones I get. And you know, uh, you can even learn this. Sir, but do you notice how it's the same words? You know, uh, God, which is super thirty-three. All right, thirty-three. Christ, thirty-three. Is this thirty-three degree Masons are trying to supplant? Uh, true, the highest vibrations physically possible. Now, when you take when you take like Christ out and is ascended, and you're using say, okay, what's the spirit of Christ? The spirit of Christ. Uh, it's much much bigger. All right, the body slows all spirit down. I mean, that's just part of human life. The body slows down the vibration of the soul to live on this 3D. And uh, uh, <clears throat> I had another thought there, but it, it just took off. So you can see how these words like mercy and compassion and universal consciousness, universal Christ consciousness, universal truth, all these expressions are 33s. 30, Jesus Christ, almost a 33. Why? Because the man, the Jesus, the man, is a little, he's a physical. He's physical. He's a physical man. He's slowing down this magnificent. Um, but it's it's marginal. You can't see it. That's a little secret people don't know. But that's why you have people saying, you know, uh, Holy Spirit, come into me. You're just asking for a huge ball of light to come into you, into your heart of mercy and compassion and understanding and being connected with the universal consciousness. And if you're lucky, you get your, you get you get high enough, you can go through the portals. <laughs> but uh, you you do have to get higher. The higher, the better. To go through the portal. That's almost the key to opening the portals. And so I, I don't know. I mean, there are some. Now, of all the observations of UFOs, it looks like they're spinning it. I did that guy who came out and went on all these TVs. I forget his name. He goes. Oh, I was with the Defense Department, and I dealt with UFOs, and blah, blah. I got, he's, he's all, it's all, yeah, he, he did deal with UFOs, but the information is disinformation. And that's how he got on CBS, Fox News. You know, he's getting on all the TV. I can't, you can't get on, because they don't want to hear about universal consciousness. That's, that's it. So they let this guy in. He's spinning a story. Oh, there's a big cover-up on the UFOs. What they'll bring out is not quite right. And it is to protect the, the power structure there. And, <clears throat> oh, I was going to say the amount of UFOs. I did this a couple of years ago. Of the, of the thousands of UFOs reported, they go to the Defense Department. And they, oh, I saw this. And, and so 
what percent is our our own government and and actually the shadow government, actually the secret society, uh, secret civilization? So all those crap. What percent of observation is that? It's sixty percent. It's sixty percent of all reported is human. It's our technology, whether it's the Defense Department or you know the secret civilization or the Space Force, and they could do all these wonderful things. But you know what's really interesting? Well, that still leaves forty percent of all the observations are alien. <laughs> That's huge. I mean, it's a huge number. So yeah, <clears throat> you know, so they commingle, and that causes it's a confusion, and um, so that's going. So uh, I think it's a key, and if you took the flu shot or the vaccine, uh, you're going to have to start changing. Now, <clears throat> I'll, I'll end with this note. Uh, I doubt, and I had this last December or so, you know, they were rolling out the Pfizer. And I had the Pfizer's going to change, but it hasn't yet, but it's going to change. It might change when Trump comes back or whoever, somebody Trump-like figure, uh, the guy who's running the government, I believe this is about so Trump ran it for six days after the inauguration all right so he did it to whatever the 27th of January and then I doubt it he's no longer president he, he's no longer president now so he, he hasn't been but he did last he did go on for another week after and about two or three months ago you you remember the ambassador to Germany? He was a, a gay guy. Now he is an intelligence oper operative. Like he had all those jobs. He bounces around in the government. And uh, one day on Google, uh, somebody said, they said, I think his name is, I don't know his first name, but it's like Rick Green, Greenwald. 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 And he, he was the national intelligence director in the White House with Trump about the last 10 months or maybe a year of Trump presidency. And he went in to reform the intelligence agencies and he did do some structural changes to our intelligence agencies. And and he always had those kind of jobs. And, and, and he is now... Anyway, um, a few months ago someone said he is president of the United States. If you go to Google and type him up and you got like Wikipedia and he goes his title who this guy was was president of the United States and they blew it off at the time like uh, like oh is this a, a mistake and stuff like that but it was up there for a day or two it was there it was there and he he's a big number in Washington but the general public kind of doesn't know about him I mean most of us heard of him but and he is the president. When I douse it, I'll douse it right now. But he has president-like powers. He's like CEO, running things. And uh, Trump is like the policymaker on the sideline. He doesn't need to be the CEO, executive. And I still get, like I have for the last five years, Biden has, is never president. He's flying to these international meetings and you know, he's waving. And I don't get him as president. I don't get... Uh, I did that was where he lives, and initially when I did this like a month after uh, the presidency, the inauguration, I, he never stayed at the White House at that point. But I do get, he's roughly 50% of the time he's at his home in Delaware, 50%. And then 20% he's in the White House, so that leaves us uh, 30%. And I think those two, I don't know where they are, but I think they're like studios. I think he has a studio in his house, you know, to look like, uh, you know, green screen and, you know, he's in the press room or something like that. And uh, we all seen the one in uh, where the TV series uh, West, West Wing was filmed. He was actually in that studio at the beginning. <laughs> and they had a garbage truck in the back out the window with Biden sitting down. Well, you can't get that shot at the real White House, but you can get it at the West Wing movie set. And they show you, there's like a little Dempsey dumpster thing, and they go and pick up the garbage, and it's like, 
these guys, they, they're just sloppy, this whole thing is there. And so he's not it. There's definitely a war going on. There's definitely a war going on. And it's a civil war. And it's not over. And they're not going to step forward for a while. But I do get August is better than July 4th. On July 4th is 50%. Moving up to 70%, that sort of thing for August. So you, we might see activity at the end of July, early August, and definitely, definitely, 95% by Christmas. So I think it's a process. They need to get certain things done, and, and it's just like it's really difficult to see. I'll pick a date up, and we're going to know more as time goes on. And I think the Pfizer vaccine will eventually turn into like a super vitamin shot. Yeah. Really, it's, or, or it'll be safe. It'll be an authentic. Uh, but don't take it now. It's not there now. And, uh, it, you might have to wait until something, until like, for better word, Trump forces worldwide retake the battlefield. And uh, as for China, we always said the Chinese Communist Party will not hold on. It will eventually, pretty soon, you know, maybe a year or two, that sort of thing. And so, uh, and it goes on and on and on. It's endless. It's, it's every aspect of our life, you know, contaminating the milk with estrogen. All the foods are contaminated. You know, the people in the 1960s had great food compared to us. McDonald's was like a six, as I mentioned before. Now it's like half a star. Now I don't get all the contamination in McDonald's for all of it. It's particularly the hamburger. Uh, the chicken, I think, was like, okay, can you show me chicken? They came out with a new McDonald's chicken. I know some of you eat there. It's a three. Three. That's, well, that's not bad. You say the Lord's Prayer, I got you up to a five. And you're, you're alchemical to change. What are you doing? Taking black magic off and say, remove all black magic. All, all sorcery is removed because they do a ceremony over human DNA material that is physically included, is physically part of the hamburger. And this is just not McDonald's. It's all the cheap food out there that has problems like that. You know. So say the Lord's Prayer as a lesson. You can sit there and no one will say it and say whatever you want. Make it short. Make it a preamble. Christ Michael. Archangel Michael. Archangel Michael is way older than the Old Testament. Way older than Enoch, which is older than the Old Testament. No one owns Archangel Michael. It is Archangel Raphael. That, those two, Raphael is really good for your physical healing. That's true. But so is Archangel Michael. They're equivalent. Uriel and some of these guys, they're like half the power. So stick with the big names. They all got little medals out there. You can wear it with something else that you like. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know, you can remove it. You can say these things to yourself all the time. And, uh, and even if you're going to an event, bless the event before you get there, if you think bad people were there. I think I went on too long. Okay. Bye-bye. I enjoyed, enjoyed talking to you today. Max enjoyed you too. Maybe we're going to go out and go swimming in the river. <laughs> I got to stop this.